SuperRack is a software that lets live sound and broadcast engineers process up to 64 audio channels through up to 512 instances of Waves plugins with near zero latency. SuperRack is unique because it gives you a lot of freedom in how you manage and use your plugins. In this quick start video, we'll cover the following topics. SuperRack SoundGrid Explained, System Requirements, and Software Installation. Hardware configurations, hardware assignments, working with plugins, floating panels, using snapshots. Before we jump into the latest features, it's important to understand the concept of SoundGrid and look into the hardware that enables us to use plugins live with ultra low latency. The hardware devices that make up a SoundGrid network allow the system to handle plug-in processing on a dedicated computer, also known as a server, while keeping graphics and application processing on the host computer. This audio over Ethernet network setup significantly increases plug-in count, eliminates latency, and enables the host and I.O. devices to be located far apart from each other to accommodate any environment, project studios, live venues, houses of worship, complex AV networks, and commercial broadcast facilities. Before proceeding, please make sure your system meets the minimum system requirements by going to www.waves.com forward slash super rack and clicking on the support tab to view the full system requirements. Software installation. Start off by installing all SuperRack software and plugins on the host computer. Open Waves Central. This utility is used to install Waves software and activate your licenses. If you don't have Waves Central installed, you can download it from www.waves.com forward slash central. To learn how to install, activate, recover, and update Waves plugins and applications, watch the video tutorial on that page. We update this video every time Wave Central is updated. Please note, you can install plugins and activate licenses on a computer that is not connected to the internet. To do that, you would need to create an offline installer on a USB flash drive using Wave Central. An offline installer can only be made on an internet connected computer. The instructions for creating an offline installer can be found in the video that is at www.waves.com forward slash central. My network consists of at least four hardware components. One, a host computer to run SuperRack and control the SoundGrid network. The SuperRack software, plugins, and preset files are located here. However, audio is not processed on the host computer. Two, a SoundGrid server. All plugin processing is done here. The speed of the server has a direct impact on the number of available SoundGrid channels and plug-in instances you can use. 3. A SoundGrid Gigabit Ethernet Switch This device links the host computer, I.O. devices, and servers. To ensure compatibility with SoundGrid, we recommend that you get your Ethernet switches from Waves. 4. A SoundGrid I.O. or a console with SoundGrid-compatible expansion cards. To run audio through the system, you'll need to assign at least one SoundGrid I.O. device. These range from two-channel preamps to 128-channel MADI interfaces. You can also use a console with a SoundGrid expansion card. Every SuperRack SoundGrid setup, no matter how large or complex, is based on this configuration. Complex SoundGrid deployments may include more I.O.s, servers, switches, a second computer for a dedicated DAW, or more controllers. 1. Connect the console expansion card and all other I.O. devices to the Gigabit Ethernet switch. The order of the connectors on the switch is insignificant, but be sure to use Category 5E cables or better. Do not use Category 5 cable, and if possible, do not daisy-chain devices. 2. Connect the host computer and servers to the switch. 3. Power up all devices. 4. 
Launch Super Rack. Let's look at one more common sound grid setup. Super Rack Sound Grid with a console expansion card and second server. In this setup, a MADI I.O. provides up to 128 sound grid channels. Here, the MADI I.O. is serving the stage preamps, monitor, and front of house. A second server has been added to provide complete processing redundancy. The host computer can also run a DAW for recording and virtual sound check. Note that SuperRack lets you prepare your sessions offline when no sound grid hardware is connected. This is particularly beneficial for touring engineers as it gives them the option to prepare sessions at the airport, in their hotel room, on the airplane, you name it. When you're ready to connect your sound grid hardware, go to the Setup tab and view your devices under the Inventory window. The easiest way to configure your I.O. devices and servers is with the Auto Configure Wizard. This scans the sound grid network and locates the correct LAN port and then assigns I.O. devices and servers to slots in the inventory. It also routes devices to racks sequentially. If you later change your inventory, you can reconfigure the devices by clicking the Auto Configuration button. Use the Port drop-down menu to select the host computer's LAN port that's connected to the sound grid network. When the correct port is selected, the link and speed indicators will display valid data. Click the plus sign in an empty slot in the I.O. section to open the device menu. Assign a device from the network devices list. Repeat this for as many devices as you need. You can do this in any slot. By default, the first I.O. device assigned will be the Clock Master device of the SoundGrid network. The Clock Master icon is blue. All slave devices are green. To assign another device as the master, Open the device menu and select Set Master. Confirm that all devices show the correct sample rate and sync status. If a device will not sync to the Clock Master device, try these actions. Remove the device and reassign it. Power cycle the hardware device and check cables. If possible, reassign the Clock Master to another device. Servers are assigned in the same manner as I.O. devices. If you assign two servers, the second is marked as redundant, or RSGS. When the configuration is finished, there will be a brief audio dropout. Its length will depend on the size of the session. If you can't tolerate a drop, do not reconfigure in the middle of a show. Simply wait for a short pause in the program. A rack must have an input and an output whether the audio comes from an ASIO or core audio driver, the console's expansion card, or a hardware I.O. device, rack input and output routing is done in the rack or overview windows. Select a rack and open its input drop-down menu using the arrow at the top. Choose the format of the input signal. Select a device. Select I.O. channels. Choose a stem format. Some multi-track formats offer different streaming sequences to meet varied delivery requirements. Rack outputs are routed in the same manner. A rack's input and output do not necessarily need to have the same number of tracks. A stereo rack input can, for example, coexist with a 5.1 output. If rack output is unassigned when the input is routed, SuperRack will attempt to patch the same input and output I.O. channels. An I.O. can be patched to several rack inputs. Only one rack can patch to an output I.O. If the channel formats for the rack's input and output are the same, for example, mono to mono, stereo to stereo, 5.1 to 5.1, etc. The I.O. channel numbers for a rack's in and out will increment together. If, on the other hand, the rack input has fewer channels than output channels, or vice versa, certain channels will go unused. In this example, 
rack input is mono and output is 5.0. SuperRack can automatically route input and output I.O. channels to each rack in a session. Patching continues until all racks are routed or all I.O. channels have been assigned. In SuperRack, each rack can hold eight plugins and the rack signal flow goes from top to bottom. To insert a plugin in a slot, click on the down arrow or the plus symbol. This opens the drop down plugin menu. Choose a plugin from the list. The input output structure of the rack determines if a plugin can be inserted in the rack. If a plugin cannot provide a component that is compatible with the rack input output structure, it will not appear in the menu. Certain plugins, for example mono to stereo, change the channel structure of the rack. You can insert a plugin into any slot. The plugins icon will appear in the slot. Click a plugin icon to open the plugins interface. A plugins rack position determines its place in the signal flow. You can change a plugins position by dragging an icon up and down in the rack. Changing plugin order may result in a short audio drop. Certain panels can be detached and floated anywhere on your workspace. This provides flexibility and quick access to critical plugins and the controls that you want to access regularly. The following panels can be detached and floated Plugin Windows, Window Tear Offs, Setup, Patch, Show, Rack, and Overview 1 and 2, User Keys, Hot Plugins, Snapshots Notes. To float a plugin's control interface, click on the detach symbol at the top of the plugin. At the top of a floating plugin, there is a control bar. There are three control buttons. Deselect the in button to bypass the plugin. Click the pin button to keep the detached plugin visible when other plugins are detached. A pinned plugin remains visible in all super rack views. Close the window and the floating plugin panel will return to the plugin pane. You can also close a window by clicking on the detach symbol. There are five super rack windows Setup, Patch, Show, Rack, and two overviews. You can tear off one or more windows to spread super rack control over several displays. Simply click and drag it away from the top bar. This floating window can be positioned on any of your displays. The name of the floating panel will appear in the Floating Panels drop-down menu on the top right. Click on the window name and it will move to the front. Close the window to return it to the default location in the top bar. Detachable panels have a float symbol at the top of their frames. Click this button to detach the panel from its dock. It can now be positioned anywhere on your Super Rack workspace. When a panel has been detached from its original position, the float symbol is blue. Click anywhere else on the display and the floated panel will move backward and disappear. To keep a panel in the foreground, click the pin button. Click the X or the float symbol again to return the panel to its dock. The Floating Windows drop-down menu on the right side of the top bar is a list of all detached panels and window tear-offs. Select a panel or window to move it to the front. The name of your main Super Rack window is shown at the top of the list. The Hot Plugins panel provides instant access to selected plug-in control panels. Up to 12 plugins can be assigned to the Hot Plugins panel. Any plugin in any rack can be assigned to the Hot Plugin panel. Once assigned, you'll see the plugin's name and rack's name above the plugin icon. Hot Plugin assignments are made in the plugin's drop down menu. Hot Plugins can be within the scope of a snapshot, so you can have a different Hot Plugin panel for each snapshot. Snapshot Scope and Recall Safe for the Hot Plugins panels can be set in the Show window. 
click on a hot plugin icon to display its complete plugin control panel. Right click on a hot plugin to remove it from the current snapshot or from all snapshots. The Hot Plugins panel can show plugins as either icons or meters. To change between view modes, click the blue meter icon on the right side of the panel. A detached Hot Plugin panel can be displayed in a horizontal or vertical orientation. Click the latter icon on the left side of the panel to toggle between these views. Snapshots help you speed up your workflow. They're used to store, manage, and quickly recall the settings of the current state of your workspace. Snapshot scope includes racks and their parameters, in, mute, gains, plugins, plugin sidechain, hot plugin panel update, windows, Dugan auto mixer settings, global BPM, what panels are open and where they are located on the screen. The easiest way to store and recall snapshots is from the drop-down menu at the top of the screen. Under the Show tab, you have more options. There, you can create, recall, set the scope of your snapshots, and manage all the snapshots in your session. Use the Recall Safe window to prevent changes to specified racks and functions during a snapshot change, regardless of scope settings. Recall Safe is set for an entire session. Once Recall Safe is set for functions and racks of a session, snapshot recalls will not affect their settings. If you want to prevent a specific instance of a plugin from changing during a snapshot recall, use the Recall Safe plugin menu item. This drop down menu item is located at the bottom of the plugin menu of the specified plugin. You will notice there's a small indicator on the plugin icon that says Safe if the plugin is in Recall Safe mode. You can also prevent a specific rack from changing during a snapshot recall by going to the Rack menu and selecting the Rack Recall Safe option. You'll notice a small green indicator to the left of the rack's name, which tells us the entire rack is set to Recall Safe. Thanks for watching this video. If you have technical questions, you can contact Waves Support at www.waves.com forward slash contact support.